All of my windows came as a standard 4 9 16 inch jam. Now, although my house is new enough that the exterior walls were framed in a three and a half inch two by four lumber, the actual sheeting they used is three quarters of an inch as opposed to seven sixteenths of an inch that they use now. Because of this, my windows are just a little bit less than the thickness of the wall. That's not a problem. I can easily, with the off cuts of my trim, build out and put jam extensions on that. First thing I do is I use a combination square. And I go around and I just put it at random places and try to find the place that is the deepest. And I'll do that at several parts across the window until I find the actual deepest spot. And that will vary some. Mostly, you know, studs go in and out, mud joints and sheet rocks get a little, sheet rock gets a little thicker. But for whatever reason, it's not going to be exactly the right size. Personally, I would rather have it a little oversized than undersized. If it's oversized, there's going to be a small gap on the back side of the trim between the shim and the sheetrock. If it's undersized, the gap is going to be between the jam extension and the trim. All my trims are going to be painted, so any caulk is going to cover up anyway. That being said, I would prefer my caulk going to be on the back, so it's a little less noticeable. The next thing I do is, anytime there's a window that's been put together in a situation like this, where you have multiple windows that have been put together to make one larger window, there's a chance for them not to be in plane. Now, I installed these windows, so hopefully I put the man in planer. But it's still good to check. Because right now in this step, it would be very easy for me to take a thin jam extension and bend it to fit with the nails. But I don't want that because that could produce gaps when I put my wire 1x6 and 1x4 trim up that can't flex as easy as the small jam extensions. So what I want to do now is take my large level and make sure that when I go across, I'm hitting the jam in every spot. Now, if I wasn't, what I would need to do is before I rip my jam extension to a thinner piece, leave it as a wider piece, whether it be a one by four or one by six or whatever it may be, to where it will be rigid and use a scribe to scribe to the actual jams of the windows, assuming that I can't adjust the windows, which at this point I can't. This will give me a good flat surface to put the trim on so I know I won't have any gaps or any cracks that I'm fighting to cover. The first piece that I like to put on when I'm trimming a window is the stool. Now, the stool sits right at the bottom of the window and usually is about two and a quarter to anywhere to three and a half inches wide, sometimes wider in certain applications. But it is what the side pieces will be sitting on top of and the skirt underneath will be butted up to. If you put this on first, it just makes it a lot easier for putting on jam extensions because then you're not having to cut the skirt around the jam extensions as well as what's already there for the window. Now, I know that I'm going to be using four and a half inch wide trim. Now, I could try to guess where my jam extensions are going to be and where the final width of the trim is going to be, but that can change. And so, instead of just guessing and trying to measure and add up the length to get how long my, uh, my stool needs to be, what I do is I hold up the piece of trim where I think it's going to be, and then I make a mark on the wall. I do that on both sides, and then what I do is I leave my stool about an inch longer than I think it's going to be on both sides. I do all my notching then. Then after I have it sitting up there in dry fit, I'll go ahead and put the jam extensions on, get the trim ready on the side, and hold it up, and where it's going to actually be nailed at, I will then make a mark and mark my stool. That way is the exact length I want. Now, a little bit harder that way, but I really like for the overhang on the side of my stool to equal the overhang on the front. A lot of people, they don't care about that and it doesn't bother them, and that's fine. It's not wrong. There's not a right way or a wrong way. It's just what I like, and I like it to be even. So this is the way, best way to get a good, even reveal. So now it's time to start notching for the stool. I've got a smaller piece just because it's easier to show you. 
as opposed to trying to wrestle the whole 12 foot piece right now. So the stool is going to sit back in this groove. It's going to have to notch around the jam of the window, the jam extensions, and over onto the sheetrock. Now, I always start with the notches that are closest to me. So, in this situation, the first thing I'm going to notch is for the sheetrock, and I would do this on both ends. Because at this moment, we can get a good line on the sheetrock. But anything back here, we're actually eyeballing and just hoping we get close. Now, I could use a combination square and try to get that better, but what I found easier is to notch this first, then after those are notched, you're sitting back flush against the next layer. Then you notch that layer. Then you're sitting back flush against the next layer. And you can keep going back however many layers you need. So if I was going to do this sheetrock with notch there first, I would hold the trim up right beside it, mark the line where the sheetrock is, and then I'll go to the other end and do the same thing. Then I would pull the trim back, rest it against the in next inset piece, slide over the sheetrock, and make a mark there. Now I can just join those marks just by taking that line and extending it down and then using my square to extend the short line. The one thing you won't see me do when I'm trimming a door or window is pull out a tape measure. Using a tape measure increases the chance of error by so much because you have to make sure that you're doing an exact copy and there's just so much of a chance that you can miss it by an inch or instead of 56 you cut it 65. So when you mark based on position, there's no chance for error. You're marking it where it is. That's how I've been able to get the best results. Now that I've notched the first notch and I've came in from the sheet rock and are physically touching the jams now, I can mark all the mullion locations and the two end jams for the next notches. When fitting the stool, it's very important that this corner here, at least for the first quarter inch or so, is very tight and as perfect as you can make it. Now, I usually try to leave some wood on the back side of the line and then once I get it cut and bring it in here, use my chisel to pair it to get it really close. Now, after that quarter inch, you can be a little loose because your mullion strip is going to cover that. But this first quarter of an inch is where the reveal will be, and if that's not tight, that's a crack that has to be caulked. Now, I just have this dry fit now, and that's how I'll keep it while I'm doing the rest of the trim in order to be able to get my measurements and cut this tool to the final length. So here is something I see happen a lot. Now, I'm getting ready to measure for my first jam extension. Now, what a lot of guys will do, whether they're putting their side on or the top first, doesn't matter, they'll stick it up there and they'll mark it, even with the top of the jam. Now, sometimes that may be all right, it just depends. So, what you have to remember is, when you put the top piece on, you're going to be leaving a reveal, approximately a quarter of an inch, maybe smaller, maybe bigger, depending on the look you're going for. But then when you put the piece of casing on, you're going to leave another reveal. It's right there. Again, maybe a quarter, maybe a, a little less, a little more, depending on what you're doing. But if you cut this too short, even though it might be long enough to meet your top piece, you could have a gap right there. So whether I'm putting my top on first or my sides on first, I always go a little bit further than the top of the jam. It's going to be hidden by the trim, it's not going to matter, but it keeps me from ever having a situation where I get that gap. I set up my combination square to just a little over an eighth inch reveal. I think that's what's going to look best. Now, I don't always use the combination square. Most of the time I just eyeball it. But it is a nice thing, especially if what you're doing is in a real visible area or it's really tight. Because really the smaller the reveal, the more likely you are to see variations. So 
So I put the jam extensions on the side and top. Now typically, I would go ahead and extend the jams to the moorings. I'm going to hold off because I want to see what this looks like with the top piece and the side piece on and the mullion recessed all the way back to the jam. I think I may like the shadow line that it gives, but I'm not sure. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and trim the window at the top and the sides, get that part finished, then I'll decide if I want to extend the mullions out to be the same depth as the side trim or have them recessed. Earlier when I measured my jam extensions, a half inch was the largest dimension, which is why I wrecked all my jam extensions to a half inch. At the top, the jam extensions are probably actually sitting proud about an eighth of an inch. Probably a little less than that. Now, there's different thoughts on this. Some guys will try to scribe their piece of extension to the wall exactly. And I used to do that in the past. Not only is it really hard, but also then you see a jam extension that gets goes from large to smaller, or smaller to larger, however you want to look at it. And to me it looks funny. It looks like there's a mistake. Ever since I've been doing it this way, when I look at it, when it's done, it doesn't look like there's a mistake to me. Now, one thing you do have to be careful with is, as I get ready to cut my side piece of trim, when I nail it up, I'm only going to nail onto the jam first. I don't want to nail into the wall. Because it's sitting proud, if I put a nail in here, it can push that trim back and make it not be in plane with the window anymore. And when I put the top piece of trim on, you'll be able to see that irregularity and it'll look off. So what I'll do is I'll nail this side in, put the top on, and then use a shim behind right at the joint to make sure that they are in the same plane and flush. At that point in time, I can put nails into studs and it won't move. Now, what I have to do now is decide what kind of reveal I want on my uh, extension. I may stay with the eighth of an inch like I did on the extension, or I may make the casing sit back more. Now, I kind of eyeball this and see what I like, and then when I see something that I like, I use my combination square to set that distance, and that's what I use. Now, I have to do that now in order to get my length measurement for my side piece, because I need to transfer that measurement to the top. in order to get my length. Now one thing to note here, when I mark this on top of my combination square, that is now further than the distance that I want with my square. So when I mark, I'm going to mark that same exact line where the lines are touching, but when I go to cut, I need to take that line. If I leave that line, my reveal on the top will actually be bigger than what my reveals on the side are. Now I'm going to be putting a small piece of trim between this top flat piece and the side flat pieces. But just to get a measure on this top piece, now is the time to do that before I put the small piece on because it will be overhanging and I won't be able to get a good measurement. And I want this to be the exact same width as the trim that's inside the side. Now I know that it is, and so when my piece goes in between there that overhang, I know that these will line up perfectly. Now something I'd like to point out is, this is the little piece of trim I was talking to you about. And you see, it's about a half inch to five eighths beyond the thickness of the top piece of trim. Well, what I want to make sure is that whatever di the difference is from the face of the trim to the face of the smaller piece of trim, I want that same distance on the end. Now I've done that on both ends to just make for a symmetric look when it's finished. Now all I have to do is look for my line, line the side of the casing up, and I know that I'm right in line with it. I'm getting ready to install the top piece. Now just like we did with the smaller piece of trim, I want to take my combination square and adjust it to the depth that it overhangs the front piece here. 
And I'll use that square to set size this. This is much more accurate than measuring as there's no room to for mismeasurement. We're getting ready to cut up the piece of crown. We go between the top piece and the front piece. I've switched to my brad nailer now because this is a very thin molding and the pastel cordless nailer I've been using is a 16 gauge finish now, which is more likely to split the wood out than the 18 gauge brad nailer. Now anytime I'm putting up a piece of crown, I go ahead and cut out the corner piece with it. I will never put up a piece of crown on a wall, on a piece of trim, without already having the miter cut. And I actually hold that miter in place to line up my corner. If you just try to line it up without this piece, nine times out of ten, there's going to be a gap. And this lets you know exactly how it needs to be. It also makes sure that when you're putting up the crown, you're not rolling it in or out. Because if you roll it in or out, you're no longer sitting flush on these flat edges and then the miter is not going to be the correct angle. I can hold this still and show you. A moment ago I told you that I would rather this piece of crown be just a hair long than a hair short. And I fully intended for it to be that way, but uh, I guess I must have had the piece slide when I marked it. And it's actually, if you can tell, just a hair short. And what this causes is the joining piece of crown then becomes too long and doesn't match up. Now there's two options. Now, actually there's multiple, but uh, two that I usually do. Now, since this is being painted, I could take my knife and cut away that end grain and um, actually move the miter over to the right. So I would literally be cutting off part of this edge. I'm sorry for the bad video. What I'm going to do instead, let me mount the camera back and I'll show you. So what I'm going to do this is the edge of the crown molding. I effectively need the whole profile to move this direction. I don't know if you can see that or not. About a sixteenth of an inch, and not even it's actually less than a sixteenth. So what I can do to accomplish that is actually pair or take my block plane and just take off just a hair of that molding and effectively move the whole profile over. Now it will make this edge slightly skinnier, but I've never had a situation where I've done this to where anybody's noticed it. But I have had a situation where people have noticed the end grain. Now the miter fits perfect. Now that the sides and top are done, I was able to take the stool and get a distance from the front of the trim and measure and mark the exact same distance 
overhanging to the side, keeping with the fact that when you do that, it lines the corners up if you were to do a 45 degree angle. So I took the stool off, cut it where I marked it, put it back, and I've nailed it in place. Now, it's time to put the apron on. Just as before, we won't be using a tape measure to mark the length of the apron. We'll set it on top of the stool, make sure it's flush, put the casing on this side, and then come over and mark it on the other side. So I've looked at it both ways, and I've decided to not put the jam extensions on the mullions. And because of that, it's requiring me to put a small rabbit at the top to go around the jam extension. Only real difference is this shadow line right there. Now, I personally like reveals and shadow lines. For me, it gives trim three dimensions, and that's why I've chosen to go this way. But you can very easily go ahead and put the jam extensions on and bring it out flush with the side trim. It's whatever you want, really. So all I've got left to do now is nail these two mullions on and we're done. Well, it's all finished. It's taken quite a while to try to video it and go back and forth and reshoot several times, but it's all done and I'm really happy with it. Um, you know, the only problem is now I've got about six more windows and I don't know, about 10, 15 doors. We'll see how it goes.